Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Ag again today we had another typical announcement from the Prime Minister. He made an announcement of $2 million a year going into food and schools. Just enough to get a headline, not enough to make a substantial difference. And that's the way this government operates. They know they're in trouble on child poverty. They know they're in trouble on housing. They know they're in trouble on electricity. And what do they do? They just tinker a little bit, but they never do anything that it will sufficiently large or substantial to make a difference that will be significant. Mr Speaker, you know, this is the government's, the national government's, what is it, fifth budget? Fifth budget. They haven't yet balanced one. Labor ran nine budgets and we ran surpluses every time, every time, every time. We actually had very substantial tax cuts for families with children and we cut the corporate tax rate from 33 cents to 30 cents in the dollar and improved right off for short-lived assets. Well, over that same period, we reduced crown debt, Mr Little. We reduced gross debt from 38% of GDP to 18% of GDP, and we got net debt down to zero. Now, what was National calling for at the time? They said they didn't want the big surpluses that we ran. They wanted more tax cuts. What foolish behaviour that would have been. That would have left New Zealand in the position that the United States... Great Britain and most of Europe has faced as a consequence of having governments that would have did there what National would have done had they been in charge, and that would have been they would have frittered away those surpluses, and as a consequence, they would have had very, very difficult times at the moment. Now, even Bill English, who was not really a Labour Party supporter, was forced to acknowledge at the time when he took office, he said, this is the rainy day that government had been saving for, the Labour government had been saving for. So, look, this, this proud record that Labour has of fiscal responsibility goes back, goes back just about through every government that you've ever had in Labour. That's, Dr Smith says rubbish. Dr Smith, who was the most fiscally irresponsible Prime Minister in your, in your life? Mr Muldoon. Mr Muldoon is the only fiscally irresponsible minister, uh, Prime Minister that we've had. John Banks, who looks like he's uh, on the phone over there. Mr John Banks, he's the only one left here who was a supporter of Mr Muldoon. And I'm not surprised that the ACT Party, the ACT Party, he named a dog after him. Well, that might be appropriate. He also modelled his own behaviour after him because he tripled council debt when he was last mayor. Mr Speaker, don't, look, the, the, the Labor Party isn't fiscally irresponsible. We've never been fiscally irresponsible, and our record shows that. So this shouldn't be a debate Order. about austerity compared Order. with government spending. Sorry. The member cannot say that phrase. There's a, there's a well-known uh, standing order. Forty, speaker's ruling 42-3. Don't do it again. Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'm sure that won't come off my time. Mr Speaker, we had shiny pledges from the National Party to get into office. They promised us a brighter future. They said, say goodbye to higher taxes, not your loved ones. Since then, 200,000 people have disappeared to Australia. Since then, we've had electricity prices continuing to rise at double the price, the, double the rate of inflation. In fact, last year, they went up by five times the rate of inflation. We've got rampant house price inflation. We've got a two-speed economy where some parts of the economy are thriving, i.e. the speculative economy, speculative housing, housing investing, investment in Auckland is driving rampant house price inflation, and National does nothing about it because they've caused the problem. 40% of their income tax cuts went to the top 10% of income earners, and they're surprised that those people are out there trying to buy more and more houses, while most, a lot of people can't. In fact, the majority of people, young people can't even afford one. Mr Speaker, not only that, but they know that it's a tax bias that's driving overinvestment into property at the cost of jobs and the productive economy, but they do nothing about it. We've got a two-speed economy in the regional sense in that we've got some regions doing well and lots of regions doing poorly. We've got unemployment uh, at over 15 per cent amongst Pacifica and Maori groups, two-speed economy for them. We've got a two-speed economy age-wise, with young people increasingly in insecure work without, uh, without secure work and career structures to keep them in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, 
What have they done in terms of the government's promise to create 170,000 more jobs? And we had, we had Mr English again in the House today trying to say that it was something other than an election promise. When I've got the advertisement that was on the television here with me, 170,000 more jobs. And at the time of the budget, where were they? They'd only got 8,000 more jobs. They were 162,000 behind. Yet another broken promise from the National Party. We've got rampant house price inflation. The government's really spooked by the fact that the Labor Party has struck a chord with people. We've said there's a need for some planning interventions, and the government's brought forward some of those, and indeed they've overreacted in one part of it, um, but only after the Labor, government, uh, the Labor Party and the Auckland Council said you've got to let them give effect to the, to the Auckland uh, plan. But they don't have a clue as to how it is that you get on and build more houses. It's actually quite simple. You get on and you build more houses. But they won't do that. They don't have a clue as to how to solve this problem. And blaming councils, which they're apt to do, and Nick Smith has been blaming councils, saying it's all the council's fault. He's the worst of it. He talks up a crisis as he did with ACC, Mr Speaker. Talk, blaming councils might take the heat off the government, but it doesn't take the heat out of the problem. And we'll be holding the government for account on this problem because rampant house price inflation is set to continue. Indeed, it's an absolute indictment of this government that the upside projection in this budget, the upside projection in this budget is predicated on more house price inflation driving more debt and more debt fueled consumption. That's the growth scenario into the government's budget. That's the upside scenario in the budget. Their growth strategy is to make the imbalances in the New Zealand economy worse. Now, Mr Speaker, let's talk about the national overdraft. The national overdraft is our current account deficit. The national overdraft is something that Bill English said he was going to fix. He was going to rebalance the economy. But under national, the national overdraft is already the worst in the developed world under them. Five years into their... Worse, it's worse than Greece. It's worse than Greece. It's the worst in the developed world, according to the IMF. And every year from here, it gets worse still, till the end of the projection period. So National's overdraft has us, instead of borrowing $10 billion extra overseas next year, or selling assets to overseas owners, it goes to $16 billion in the, in the projection period. As, as Russell Norman said today in the House, an extra $60 billion of net international liabilities in the forecast period. Mr Speaker, these guys could not run a bath. Right. They couldn't run a bath. They haven't got jobs, they haven't got extra jobs, electricity prices keep going up at twice the rate of inflation. And what do they do about all these things? Nothing. Because, you know, the National Party in the end, they stand for vested interests. They stand for John Banks keeping secret donations from Sky City, currently facing charges before the court in respect of that abysmal lack of judgment. We have, uh, we have the National Party giving New Zealand the misery of poking machines in return for a shabby deal for a convention centre in Auckland. What's happened in the polls What's happened in the polls is that there's been a more than 10% two-party swing from National to Labor since the election. What's happened to the polls in terms of ACT is that we can't find them. They've just about stopped reporting ACT in the polls because they're under 1%. They're below the margin of error. Mr Speaker, that's what's happened in the polls. Mr Speaker, this two-speed economy is not working for ordinary New Zealanders. That's why 200,000 people have left for Australia. 40% of them are between the age of 18 and 30. These are our future, the young people. It's shameful, absolutely shameful that they are leaving. Mr Speaker, we used to hear Bill English saying, sticking to a plan that's working. Well, that's gone. You haven't heard them skiting about the brighter future or stop saying, waving goodbye to your loved ones. All these little, these flash slogans, they're all being proved wrong one by one. And as a consequence, the shine continues to, to, to tarnish in respect of the National Party. Mr Speaker, this is a bad budget. It does not address any of the fundamental problems of the New Zealand economy. Our Honourable Dr Nick Smith.
It's with uh, huge pride that I endorse this budget from Bill English.